Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas Shepherd. I am the founder of PresenceOrb. A little over two years ago, uh, as a sole founder, I set around uh, creating a home security device. Um, it's a little bit different in the market. It was going to use wireless access points to detect mobile phones. Now, fast forward two years, uh, PresenceOrb is now active in three continents. We have retailers um, and also marketers, advertisers, local hospitality and transport use cases uh, across a number of, as I mentioned, verticals and a number of different countries. The one thing that has changed, we're no longer a home security device. We're now a customer analytics platform that's used by some of the largest retailers in the world to better understand their customers. Typically when we say customer analytics, the first thing that comes to mind of retailers is their online platforms, their web pages that they're using to sell their products, Amazon Analytics, Google Analytics, and so on. Where we differ in this marketplace is that we're talking about brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. We're analyzing how customers are engaging with physical store, uh, how frequently they're coming back, and a number of different key performance indicators uh, around that physical retail store. So that's a little bit about what we're doing. How do we do this? Well, we provide overlay or proprietary software which is placed on the wireless access points which are physically inside the retail store to detect mobile phones as they pass by those stores, as they come into those stores, as they return. Being able to calculate such things as linger time, return percentages, cross-store visits, and a number of different performance indicators which are usually applied to the online world but for brick and mortar retailers. We've gained a lot of knowledge by being able to do this in the online world. By applying it to physical store, we're seeing uplifts of between 3 and 6% profits, simply, simply by understanding more how customers are using the store and adapting such things as window displays uh, and marketing material to better appeal to those customers who, who are frequenting the store. At the moment, we see around about 75% of customers who come into a store will be uh, picked up by a presence or uh, enabled device in that store. We support a number of Wi-Fi vendors, the likes of Cisco, Ruckus, the large enterprise vendors, are already enabled to work with Presence or uh, Presence or Analytics on the back end, and it can be as simple as an over-the-air update. Uh, we've deployed to such large uh, deployments as two, three hundred stores within an hour. Um, we have a track record of being able to do this for a number of large retailers, as I mentioned, and a proven track record of increasing profits off of the back of it. Uh, currently, we see somewhere in around about 2.5 million devices every day in the stores in which we are installed. About 30% of those devices are returns to that store, learning more information about re repeat custom to the store uh, and exactly what customers are looking for from those retailers. The important question really though for retailers is why do we do this? It's great to have data, sure, but what is it bringing to the retailer? And I touched upon it uh, a little bit there a moment ago, but this data, um, it's, it's been summed up much more uh, succinctly than I could ever hope here by Peter Songrad from Gartner. This was last year when he referred to information as the oil of the 21st century. It's what's powering retail businesses. Um, however, as we know from combustion engine, oil needs to be refined. And that's what Presence Herb does. We take this very raw data that's coming off of Wi-Fi analytics uh, spots in addition to cameras, uh, other third-party data sources and um, proprietary data that's supplied by the retailer. We combine it together, we refine it, and we present back to the retailer what we refer to as actionable insight, because that's what's important to the retailer. They're drowning in data at the moment, and that, that's why we use this word hangry. They're both hungry for data, yet angry at the data they have at the same time. Much of it is not actionable, right? We have reams upon reams of CSV files and charts that show, us, or show retailers nothing uh, other than how frequently people are coming back to the store. What do I do with that information? This is where Presence Herb steps in. We not only calculate that information using the wireless networks and the other data that we uh, previously spoke about collecting, but we then pronounce back through uh, predictive-based analytics uh, and a number of machine learning algorithms, uh, suggestions as to what the retailer should do within their store to increase uh, conversion rates in store or return percentage areas where they may wish to spend media, which they're not currently doing so, and we present back a whole bunch of information which is at key actionable and allows the retailer to be able to generate revenue using this information. How does it look? Uh, what do we present back to the retailer? Is it a consultancy gig? What is it? It's not. 
It's a cloud-based platform. Our business model is SaaS-based. We charge per access point in the venue, so small retailers may have a single access point and therefore reduce cost. Larger retailers, larger venues, more access points, more cost. We present back the information in quite a compelling fashion. Uh, it should be easily accessible to the retailer and allow them to be able to manipulate the data and analyze it. Uh, if they have a, a higher degree skill set and analyst team internally, they can import that data into their own platforms and further analyze it. Or for a single retail, retail store, uh, a pop-up for example, they may wish to just understand the footfall passing their front door, change their window display, see if they increase their conversion rate. These are the sort of things that uh, presence or displays back to the retailer as uh, suggestions that they may wish to look at uh, once the data has shown the system that there's opportunity lying there. An example insight that we've seen from Oxford Street, 70% of visitors and a number of Oxford Street retailers that we work with will never make it into the basement. That number is actually increased if the down or upstairs are actually stairs and not an escalator or lift. Uh, for us, this means that retailers should be uh, focusing upon the fit outs of their store when they come to refurbish or if they're looking to increase their, uh, their tenancies or change their lights, then they may wish to look at stores that have lifts, have escalators or in fact don't have a basement uh, as would be appropriate here. I'm going to leave you with this thought. If we don't measure it, we can't manage it. Um, and that is important to retail 10 years ago as it is today. Um, physical retail is still the dominant uh, retail portal for the purchase of non-white goods uh, throughout the country. And therefore, we should be paying more attention to how we measure that, uh, that particular venue. With that, I will thank you all very much for your time and ask you to please follow us on Twitter and Facebook and all the rest of it. Thank you. Thanks very much. No um, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. That was great. Um, thank you. Yeah, and, oh, and I should say that if any of you have a burning question that you'd like to ask any of the startups, um, we're not going to go back to the crowd because it kind of gets a bit awkward. But um, you can always tweet me at Rolls Manthorpe, um, and I will do my best to convey your question. Um, so, Thomas, I, I have to ask. Um, so, I'm just going to read you a headline um, from Wired. Um, yeah, I think you know. I'm going to say August, <laughs> August 2013. Yep. Uh, tracking devices hidden in London's recycling bins are stalking your smartphone. Yes, that was. A, a yeah, and that, I mean, that, yeah, and this, um, yeah, I mean, this this caused quite a stir, didn't it? And people it did. weren't very happy about the fact that they seemed to be being tracked. Yes. Um, using their unique smartphone identifying number without their permission. Yes. Uh, How do you react to that? Since then, we, we've learned a lot. Uh, that was public space tracking that was going on. It was very much the, the introduction of this market, uh, which is the Wi-Fi analytics and tracking space. Uh, since that time, we've adhered to a, a number of legal frameworks that are coming out of the, the US, the likes of the Future Privacy Group, which allows for a global opt-out. Uh, we show signage in the stores in which we are now uh, located. We no longer do public space analysis, uh, so it's all uh, so, in store. So you don't do so. So where? Because where did that stat about Oxford Street come from? Because Oxford uh, Street. No, this is the the retailers within Oxford Street, not actually Oxford Street itself. So oh, that's okay. for the actual retail so, stores. So that's to so say, like Topshop, in in Oxford Street, within their store, people aren't going downstairs to the. That's correct. The, yeah. the vintage bit is it? Uh, it's not. We don't okay. do top shop, but uh, right. okay. I can, anyway, I can yeah. imagine so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so people aren't going downstairs. There. Okay. We're, Understood. We've moved out of any public space, any public domain, the likes of the bins, the advertising boards, anything that was in public space, and moved uh, internally to locations where uh, consumers are optionally going uh, somewhere that's not in their everyday pass uh, or walk. Plus, we have this global opt out. We have signage in each of the locations okay. which we place, yeah. uh, and we sign up to a number of privacy groups uh, to help us manage that. Um, okay. I guess most importantly, though, is we're also at the forefront of ensuring that there's benefit to consumers via this product. Uh, we're looking at the ability to be able to display business information to consumers for could be anything. Okay, yeah, because I read about this uh, kind of being able to indicate, say, on City Mapper that um, that a bus is full or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, something that um, makes it yeah. useful. Okay. Thank you. Um, right. So questions. I've got a, got a fair number actually, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep it to one or two. Um, <clears throat> I, there's quite a few players in this space. Sorry, I'm banging on about competitors. No. And uh, I know one player was in a similar space to you, and when mm. Apple uh, changed the iOS Mac and the right. inability to uh, detect the Mac code, yep. can you explain how that's impacted <laughs> you? 
because um, obviously you're looking at heat maps, and there's so many people that are doing this. So how are you different? And then secondary question is, who are some of the clients you have right now, and why have they chosen you over anyone else? Sure. Uh, quick, quick answers, please. Of yeah. course, thanks. Yeah, if I, I may go James got questions as well. If I may go the second one first, because uh, really we're under non-disclosure with the vast majority of our clients, so we're not really allowed to talk about the clients that we're working with. Are they tier A retailers? Or yes. Something like that. Yes, uh, high street retailers that uh, Above multiple hundreds. Stores. Yes. Okay. Uh, we also work with landlord, landlords, shopping centres, and the likes. Uh, public, uh, public space excluded. Uh, but we're talking shopping centres. Uh, the, to answer your first question, we focus very much on the business analytics piece uh, of what you're describing. Many of our competitors out there are what we would refer to as a jack of all trades. Uh, they're looking to supply a number of services and not necessarily focusing on any one. We deconstruct all data that we receive and reconstruct the presence analytics data from it. Uh, therefore, we're um, far more accurate with respect to being able to calculate the number of people who are in the store etc than the ones who are simply pulling a feed from an access point. But what about the fact that iPhones are anonymizing yep. against the Wi-Fi routers? So that uh, has been kind of played out quite poorly in the press. Uh, the Mac randomization on uh, an iPhone is actually not as frequent as many consumers would expect. It's typically less than once every half hour and also it's under very limited circumstances even in the most uh, new version of the iPhone. Therefore, it doesn't impact us. Okay. Like right, really. so we're running out of time. Cheney, one really quick question, if that's okay. Thank you. Yes, I, I actually, I, there's an area that kind of is uh, unanswered for me, which is what you, you would actually see as a, a customer of Presence Orb in terms of a dashboard or information. And the one screen that we saw, the interface of how that data would play back, seemed quite underwhelming. Um, it was a non-heat heat map and then some artwork to the left of it. So. You know, sure. what type of meaningful data could I actually anticipate getting as a retailer if I worked with you? Sure. So, the, yeah, you're right. That was probably, most of our screens are chart-based, um, as is just inherent with this sort of information that we're present, trying to present back. So the general audience is not great to present back charts. What we were showing there was actually a run-through of entry and exit. Uh, for a store which is usually animated over the course of a uh, opening and closing hour. So to look at the information, you can very quickly grasp when the peaks are of entry into your store and exit from your store. So these are instrumented stores that have various points. That's correct, yeah. So we do heat mapping, we do path mapping, we do multi-store mapping. Uh, there is there's a vast array of information in there, uh, but the vast majority of it is presented by, by charts and animated uh, presentations. Yeah, dashboard world. Thank yes. you very much. No, thank you. Thanks. Brilliant, thanks.